Hi, good morning. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about um, influencers, about role models, um, and I want to start off by, uh, I read this book by James Clear, and I'm just going to be paying attention to my notes uh, I wrote this morning, but James Clear wrote a book called Atomic Habits. If you have not um, read that book, I suggest that you go buy it. Um, the description of that is a proven system to build a good, uh, to build good habits, break bad ones, and achieve remarkable results through um, tiny incremental changes. Any kind of long-term transformation is the product of identity change. And um, James Clear uh, has an idea that that we can accomplish a specific goal in life um, if we change our habits little by little. And he talks about how um, in order to change habits, it's like, so say I want to be in the Olympics, <laughs> which that's funny. Um, I don't want to be in the Olympics, nor, you know, anyway, but in order to to become something he proposes that you fix yourself um on modeling a life of of an olympic athlete and that whatever their routine their schedule their uh habits then you mimic it and so it just hit me uh, you know, my, my daughters follow certain people on Instagram and, um, you know, we call those in society now influencers. I follow several pastors um, and um, those influencers or those people that we look to and study uh, have some profound um, influence in our life. So, I, I you know, in my quiet time, it's kind of like the Lord when I was like, you know, what I speak on today or tomorrow or whenever I felt led to, to, to come on here again. And he's like, let them know um, I should be their influencer. I should be their role model. Um, not man, not anybody here on earth, but I should be influencing their life and transforming it and helping change that. And so I did a study and I did a Google search and, um, you know, um, I came up with some different things and I typed in the characteristics of Jesus and there were 10, um, that came up in my study. And the first one was loving. He's loving. He's forgiving. Uh, humility, compassion, gentleness, self-control, patience, obedience, honesty, and prayerful. And so then I took each of those apart and I broke them down into um, how we could apply scripture verses with those and what it means. And so if we are going to model or want to become more Christ-like, because that's that's God's goal for us, that we become like his son, Jesus. And that's a process uh, that takes just like the atomic habits. It talks about little changes and how those little changes turn to big changes. And overall, it's transformation. That if we look at our lives or we look at anything and we say, oh, it's just too overwhelming. I have too much to change. I have too much to do. Just like cleaning a house. Um you know, break it down, do it room by room. Don't even do it by room by room. Uh, in cleaning my house, if something starts to get on my nerves, uh, I just write a list and say, okay, entranceway. Okay, dining room table. Okay. And, and I do little goals each day so that I'm not consumed and overwhelmed with spending the whole day cleaning. Um, but by the end of the week, it's going to be clean because I've paid attention to little th things throughout the week. So hope this is making sense to you and making life application uh, that in our lives, uh, change will never occur if we don't set routines and we don't start somewhere and say, but you know, that awareness has to be 
the first thing is that you have to be aware of the need uh, and then you have to take action so you have to make application it, you can't just think it wish it pray it you've got to literally do it you've got to take the steps to make these changes okay so let's start with love it says god is love in first john 4 7 through 8 he speaks about great there is no greater love has no one than this um, that someone lay his life down for his friends. So Jesus, of course, we know went on the cross. Uh, he died for us. He died for our sins. And uh, that is the greatest love uh, that we have. Um, that was John 15, 13. Sorry. God is love is First John 4, 7 through 8. Um, and so we are called to love. We are called to love like Jesus. And that's hard because there's offenses that has been taken against us and and we you know sadly we have people that don't like us and um we are called to pray for them and love them and treat them like jesus and so that's the first characteristics to be like god um the second is forgiving uh that is luke 23 34 it states that the Father forgive, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. So this is when Jesus actually was was on the cross, um, and they, you know, they crucified him, and he asked the Father to forgive them that they didn't know what they were doing. And forgiving is a big, huge component in your uh, relationship with with Christ. Um, if you can't forgive and you're harboring uh, anger and resentment in your heart and, and those offenses, uh, the enemy uses that. Like, it's really hard to have a good relationship with God um, when you're not uh, being like him or, or even like saying no. That's the, like deliberate disobedience. It's like, no, I'm not going to forgive them. Uh, and then you act sinfully uh, against that person daily uh with your attitude or uh with your emotions and so we're called to forgive so the first one is loving the second one is forgiving the third one is humility and this is in mark 10:45. uh for even the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many uh so you know jesus he he was like the king uh but yet he chose to be uh, among the people and to be a servant to the people um and, and he you know he he died uh i mean like he was even born in a manger uh, a king born in a manger and so that's like the low with the animals um and he was a king uh so humility it is great, and, and that's shown also in John 13, 5, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Um, and so he bowed before uh, them, being the king, uh, being uh, the savior. Uh, he, he did that to them. Um, the next one, number four, is compassion. Uh, and this is shown in Matthew 9, 36. I mean, it's shown, when I quote a scripture, it's in many places. But I just wanted to give one scripture text to show you. Uh, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Because they were harassed and helpless. Like sheep without a shepherd. Um, and you know, we're supposed to have compassion over mankind. Um, because especially those who are don't know the lord uh and those who are far away from him like who have uh because their lives are it's just like destructive like i, I get burdened and i sat sad and and i cry a lot uh for people now because i can't imagine the things that I've gone through in my life, um, having having Jesus, having that relationship, and knowing that it's been so trying and at times very overwhelming and a sense of hopelessness, 
has come over me. Um, and, and, and I have Jesus as my personal Savior. And I, I'm close to Him. Can, can you imagine uh, if you do not have that hope in Him? Like, I mean, that's crazy. So it, it's like I'm really saddened for people who, who do not know the Lord. Um, and I'm very saddened for people who know the Lord and the, the wolves over their eyes and they're blinded, um, by what they're doing and they don't even see it. And so I have great compassion for that. Um, so number five is gentleness. Um, and it says a perfect picture is when Jesus, um, encourages the children to come to him and he was talking to them and he bowed down on the ground and got on his knee and he was at their eye level and he was but i mean jesus isn't just always majorly gentle um you know his characteristics he says the lion and the lamb so he is very direct when he needs to be and he does get angry i mean he slipped tables at the pharisees uh in the temple um so it's not that jesus doesn't have that side of him but his overall characteristic is one of gentleness and that's how gentleness goes right along with love that's how we win people to the lord that's how we're supposed to deal with people um you know and and just because I'm, I'm sharing this with you doesn't mean i've always done this um i have to take things to the feet of jesus every day i have to ask him for forgiveness and that's his amazing grace that's what the cross is about um that he has forgiven us of our sins um and so this is like an a forever journey uh, the christian walk it's like you are growing daily and you're you're becoming more mature and that's why when you get to the end of your race and and he says I don't know I don't have it written down here it just came out of my mind well done my good and faithful servant you have ran the race well or something like that but we're in a race um, and we are to be held accountable to ourselves but to to God to his standards to his uh, commandments and like measuring ourselves and like are we running that race well or have we taken a break or have we stopped in the middle of the race because we were too tired or uh, we were thirsty or we felt we needed something more to finish the race so you know we became selfish and you know we took things upon ourselves and and so, anyway, I don't know how I got off on that because that has nothing to do with gentleness. Anyway, so tangent there, chasing the rabbit. Uh, the next one is self-control. And Proverbs twenty-five twenty-eight: a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. And um, let's see, it says James 4, 7, resist the devil, he will flee. Um, John sixteen thirty three temptation um, in the world. I don't know. I, I might have written. I can't hardly read my writing, so that's crazy. I write so fast when I'm when I'm uh, onto something. But self control, um, we really have to yield and surrender to the spirit, um, you know, and say no, no. And I just had to do this the other day. <coughs> Excuse me with my thoughts and taking them captive um we have to set parameters up for ourselves and we have to say no karen you can't do that you can't do that because that's going to make you think this and if you think this then you're going to do that and you're just going to ruminate and then you might act on that and then that's not going to get you where you need to be because that is not christ-like um and so you have to take it to jesus um and and part of the study has come because of of me chasing after the Lord, of me, you know, struggling with different areas uh, of my characteristics. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times when we do studies or we do talks or, or we teach or whatever, it's because we have 
done that or felt that in our lives. Uh, the next is patience. 1 Timothy 1.16 I received uh, for um, reason that in me as the Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who believe. Um, and he waited 30 years to begin his ministry. Um, he waited exactly for the time to be right. Um, so we have to be patient. Uh, be still and know. I, I say that all the time to myself. Karen, be still and know. Patience. God promises. Uh, hold to those promises. Uh, his promises are real and truthful. But his timing is his timing, not our timing. And we might want things to happen a little quicker than they are happening. Um, but he asks us to be patient. Uh, the next is in Philippians 2, 8. Obedience. And being um, found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And he even asked God for a different way. I mean, like he said, you know, can this not be done any other way? Please take this from me. Um, and he was struggling. I think it said he he shed tears of blood. Um and that is major obedience. So when we obey, it does come with a price. You know, it, it does. There is a transaction there. Um, but if we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way. I can't sing, but I remember that song. Um, trust and obey, for there's no other way. Um, that's a good song. Anyway, we have to just be obedient. Can't be by our emotions. We just got to do it because Jesus says to do it. Uh, the next is honesty. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, honesty, he, he hates dishonesty. Uh, and, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. A lot of times we lie to ourselves. Um, we lie to others. We uh, embellish the truth. Or we... Uh, you know, the thing that I've learned uh, from watching people and helping people and just just being a teacher and watching my students, and there are people who truly believe lies that they've created in their heads. Like, they, they think something and you can't tell them anything different and they believe it as truth and it's not a truth it's a lie like they deceive themselves so it's not a matter of just lying to others but lying to ourselves like and and just not being honest about who we are and what we've done and um, making that right with the lord and, and making that right with those who you've hurt um we just you know our pride I think that's a study I have coming up is, is pride, um, which is rooted in our ego, um, which is stemmed from fear. Anyway, yeah. Uh, 